bipartisan group of lawmakers returning from a three-day trip to Ukraine now sounding the alarm on Russia's military buildup on that border. They are urging the administration to act now and speed up aid to Ukraine. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. He is a member of the Armed Services Committee, a, a green, the only Green Beret in Congress, former Green Beret commander. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Welcome back. Uh, you were on that trip, one of the lawmakers who visited Ukraine. What can you tell us? What did you see? Well, Maria, we wanted to go and, and show the Ukrainians that the Congress uh, supports them. Uh, we take this Russian military buildup, uh, intimidation and coercion very seriously. Uh, but I have to tell you, the sense of urgency and concern out in Ukraine doesn't seem to match what's coming out of this White House. Uh, the Ukrainians are incredibly concerned. This is an existential threat. Not only do the Russians have uh, hundreds of thousands of troops massing on their border, with more still pouring in, uh, they are on the verge of being able to cut off uh, all gas flowing through Ukraine, cut off their electricity grid, cut off their coal supplies, uh, and potentially any in imports or exports if they take their last, uh, if they take their last uh, port. Yet what we're seeing from the Biden administration and from Biden himself are promises of the tough action he'll take after Russia invades. And what uh, both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, came away from this trip uh, concerned that we need or believing that we need sanctions now. Uh, we need to deter Russia from taking this action. We need to get inside Putin's calculus. Uh, we need to turn Ukraine into a porcupine with lethal aid. But that lethal aid needs to be moving right this minute, because if it's not moving now, it's not going to get there in time. And we need a lot more of it. I mean, isn't it unbelievable that now uh, Putin decides to build up the, that troop uh, build up on the border just as Xi Jinping in China is uh, flying a record number of uh, jets into the uh, defense area in Taiwan? Your thoughts on why these adversaries are, are doing this now? Well, they're doing now, Maria, it's, uh, it's simple because they know they can get away with it and they know they can get away with it with this White House. Look. You know, Putin invaded Ukraine last time in 2014, just two months after the Sochi Olympics, uh, and he knew there would be very little repercussions, and there weren't. Uh, and, you know, he took Crimea and parts of eastern Ukraine, and I think he's on the verge of doing it again because he can get away with it. Uh, it you know, look, it, it, this is no surprise that it's happening in the wake of Afghanistan, and it's happening in the wake of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline construction finishing. The Germans haven't turned it on yet, but they're going to. And once they do that, Putin has Western Europe in checkmate. So any type of sanctions that go into place, you know this, has to uh, encompass dollars and euros. But if the Europeans are fractured on those sanctions because uh, Putin has his, you know, literally his hands around their neck from an energy supply standpoint, then it, it's not going to work. Uh, and he knows it. What is the motivation here on Joe Biden's part to to be, you know, so so timid with these adversaries? Yeah. I mean, he won't bring up the the origins of COVID nineteen to Xi Jinping. He allows Russia to have the Nord Stream pipeline to transport gas to Europe. What is the motivation? You know, and, and in addition to that, right now, Maria, the White House is sitting on a lethal aid package. Uh, that the Ukrainians desperately need and want to defend themselves. I want to be clear. Nobody's talking about hundreds of thousands of U.S. boots on the ground uh, in Ukraine. We're talking about helping an ally defend themselves against what could be the largest land invasion since World War II. But underlying the entire Biden foreign policy, it's the same thing that was under the Obama foreign policy. It was don't antagonize, uh, you know, don't be too aggressive. Don't you know, if we're kind enough and nice enough, our adversaries will come to the table, put diplomacy first without really military force uh, to, to back it up. Uh, so our adversaries take us serious, our diplomats seriously. And we're seeing all of those mistakes play out again. And the reason that lethal aid is not moving in right now is because Biden doesn't want to antagonize Putin uh, in the hopes that Putin will be a nice guy. Uh, and we all know that yeah. type of weakness invites aggression. And that's about what uh, that's what we're going to see happen again.
Yeah. Meanwhile, mean, meanwhile, all they're doing is pushing through their massive spending pl uh, bill. They want it done by Christmas. Uh, Joe Manchin and Krista Sinema are still standing in the way. Manchin reportedly still uneasy about all these gimmicks in the bill, saying that these massive federal programs are temporary when, in fact, they're not. A new Fox Business poll finds 46 percent of registered voters think that the Build Back Better bill will push inflation higher. Uh, 21 percent said it would help. 42 percent said that the bill will hurt the economy. And yet they're pushing it forward, Congressman. Your thoughts? Well, it seems to be finally uh, <laughs> on life support, if not dead in the Senate. Uh, and, 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 you know, thank God for, for Manchin and Cinema that called out these gimmicks. It is not paid for. That's a lie. You can't have, on the one hand, programs that are only going to be in place for a year or two when we all know the intent, the true intent, uh, is for permanent government programs. But to say they're going to fall off a cliff in a year or two, but then we're going to collect revenue for 10 years, uh, that's a budget gimmick that's lying to the American people. But, Maria, we should not be uh, celebrating because if they push through voting reform, and there are many on the progressive left that want to forever make America vote the way California and New York does, where they have super majorities, then they can come back around uh, to that socialist spending program once they've locked down power. Uh, and what this new push you're going to see is all about power. It's about vote harvesting, no voter ID, you know, all of those elements uh, that California and New York have put in place that they now want to take nationwide. So we shouldn't be resting uh, over the holidays for one minute because they're they're coming it's, and they're coming big time. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary, Congressman. I mean, you know, I mean, Mark Levin calls it totalitarianism, and that's certainly what it feels like. It's just extraordinary. And, and these mandates and the surveillance, uh, the bank surveillance they want, all pages right out of the Communist Party of China. Well, the, and they're going to hide this, this, on this yeah, voting rights word. under... Well, they're going to hide it under the cloak of voting rights and accessibility to polls and, and, and all of that language. But make no mistake, uh, if they get this through, uh, Republicans will not be in power for a very long time. They will tilt the playing field so greatly towards that area and then uh, towards uh, their side. And then once they get that in place, it's the Supreme Court and it's fundamentally changing uh, the, the nature of this country. This, this is all so un-American. It's just extraordinary to me. Congressman, it's good to catch up. Thanks so much. Well, we'll fight this fight. Thanks, Maria, and Merry Christmas. And to you, Congressman Michael Waltz, Merry Christmas.